In our last episode, we featured Kwana Parker, leader of the 19th century Comanches, whose empire stretched across four U.S. states. Though they were fierce, once really fierce warriors, today most of the 15,000 members of the Comanche Nation live in southwest Oklahoma, merging with modern America while trying to maintain their traditions and language. Greg, why is it that the Comanches are remembered today? They had such an impact back uh, over 100 years ago in terms of uh, holding up settlement of a big portion of the American Southwest. It was very difficult for people to pass through their area safely unless they in some way acknowledged the Comanche, maybe, you know, paid them some tribute or something. The Comanche were were very tough people. They were very cruel. They, you know, thought nothing of torturing their uh, captives and uh, murdering people. Uh, and they expected the same from other tribes if it happened to them. They were very, very tough people. And uh, it took a long time to uh, defeat them. The Comanche nation of today is known for its hospitality and amiability. But for much of the 18th and 19th centuries, the Comanche and allied tribes fiercely dominated the rich hunting grounds of the southern plains, where bison roamed in large herds. The advance of industrialized civilization eventually crushed the Comanche as it did other tribes. But S.C. Gwynn, author of Empire of the Summer Moon, A History of the Comanche, says this tribe was tough to beat. They were a powerful geopolitical force. They themselves were busy exterminating and driving uh, other native tribes off the land for 200 years. From being these fierce warriors to settling down as businessmen and, and entrepreneurs, how are the current day Comanche living their life? Well, the, the current Comanche, the ones that, that I uh, spoke with in Lawton, Oklahoma, um, they are pretty much integrated into a community with other people. Comanche no longer go to war with their neighbors, but through dancing and singing at gatherings called powwows, they connect to a fabled and colorful past. Frank Swift dances with his five-year-old son who attends a Comanche preschool. My son, he went to the uh, Comanche daycare and he can sing oh, some of the Comanche oh, hymns and he knows oh, some of the words and, and everything, so he, he knows more than me. Swift says he lives and works in the modern world but maintains his Native American identity. I'm, I'm proud of who we are and where we come from. It must be a challenge for them to survive in the 21st century but at the same time trying to keep their identity alive? Well, it's a challenge that's faced by many Native Americans, but uh, ironically, I guess in a sense, it's, it's faced more by the ones who are in a position to be successful or who are in, say, uh, an area, an urban area where you have more interaction with other people. It, it becomes a, a, a sort of a temptation to be just go all the way into the, uh, the mainstream culture, and you then you can lose uh, your connection with the past and with your own culture. And so uh, Comanche are making an effort to try to balance that and uh, keep uh, in both worlds at the same time. In past generations, white teachers on reservations forced Indian children to speak English and punished them for speaking their native tongues. But today, even many older people are trying to learn the language at Comanche College. So let's try it out. Hockney. One of them is 68-year-old Clifford Takawana. I never got a chance to take Comanche. My, my parents chose not to teach us because they wanted us to go and be successful and get a good job. Uh, and they felt like if they taught us the Comanche language, it might hold us back. Seeing the young person teaching the older people the language, I want to I wanna yell up into heaven to my grandparents to say, look, we're not pitiful anymore.